chill. The, the weather obviously affects everybody and always has. It's one of the few times in history you can point to something that affects everybody always and everywhere. If you go back again to uh, World War II, a historical perspective, uh, meteorologists actually provided forecasts for the military and you know when to invade, when to plan attacks. So now to the general public we give plans just for vacations. Meteorology really has come a long way. I mean, even in the last uh, 10 to 20 years, I've been in the weather service for about 18 years. And from when I first stepped in the, in the, in the, into an office um, to, what, to just stepping into one today is almost like night and day, just from the advent of computers, um, more advanced uh, instrumentation, observations are much more dense, more, much more complete. I consider it like two fields, like it's the old meteorology where you kind of just look at the sky and you kind of tell what's going on, and to the new meteorology where you sit in front of a computer and, and do it that way. That's why weather is always rated as the most important part of the news, you know, that people want to know the news stories of the day, but still a lot of them tune in just for the weather because, you know, the news might not necessarily affect them, but the weather definitely does. The United States as a whole, we get the most severe weather of any country in the world. Um, when it comes to tropical systems like hurricanes, when it comes to tornadoes, when it comes to hail, when it comes to winter storms, blizzards, um, heat waves, the United States has the most number of severe weather events in the whole world. All right, what do you know about meteorologists? Nothing. <laughs> Meteorologists can be wrong 90% of the time and still get, keep their job. They collect a bunch of data about weather and give it to us so we know when, what kind of weather is coming our way. So do you, do you know what they do? Who? Meteorologists? Oh yeah, they hit the earth someplace in Texas, I guess, and they destroy whatever they hit. And, and they are, I don't know, kind of talking heads for the Weather Channel and other scientists. I'm just saying they guess. <laughs> I think their job is luck. Given the proper instruments, I think anyone could probably do their job. You're not a meteorologist, are you? you know, a lot of people jokingly say, well, you know, flip a coin, and I hate that. Weather forecasting is not as simple as yes or no. It, it just isn't, and we don't use dartboards. <laughs> it is a difficult, difficult job. How many jobs actually go about predicting the future? It's, it's, a, it's a hard science. Um, I had to take um, calculus one, two, and three, plus two more classes past that in differential equations. So that, that's a lot. And the physics, you know, thermodynamics, it's not for the faint of heart. It's a long day. This is not a nine to five job. Weather goes on 24-7, 365. You know, I have to stay up all night, especially when we get severe weather here in West Virginia. Occasionally we get it in the, in the uh, morning hours, 3, 4, 5 a.m., and I've literally stayed up the whole night tracking the progress of the storms. Uh, I think that meteorologists are very accurate now, especially when you go out one to two days. After that, day three slips a little bit. By the time you get out to day 10, it's, it's kind of ridiculous to even talk about that. Five, seven day forecasts really aren't that accurate. And then you're probably wondering, well, why do we actually issue five and seven day forecasts if they're really not that accurate? Well, the answer is simple. The public wants it. They want to know what's going to happen a week from now. So we give it to them. I've had tons of people in the summer asking me, is it going to rain on my wedding day? And it's like two months ahead of time. And it's just very hard to do anything long term like that because the weather changes so quickly. If you miss a forecast, you know, I mean, we, we, we genuinely feel bad. I, I know if I miss a forecast, I take it very personally. You know, I, I don't like it when that happens. So everybody takes it seriously, and it does affect, because if there is one death related to a hurricane, the, the National Hurricane Center takes it personally. That's always on our mind. I mean, we, we strive to save lives. We had weeks to monitor that hurricane. We had a couple weeks. We saw Hurricane Katrina down the Caribbean as a tropical storm. We saw it cross into Florida. Had three days to say, yes, it was gonna go probably right at New Orleans, okay? But if you had 1950s technology, you'd have done well to have one day of notice. One day. Could you imagine what would have happened then? One day of notice. There's no way you could have evacuated all those people in one day's time. So from that standpoint, 
the forecast actually did save several lives. Frost in the hollows in the 20s, a partly sunny, breezy, and milder day tomorrow. Stronger the breeze, higher temperature. 58, maybe even 60 by day 10. The That's mission is, is obvious in television. You've got to get people to watch. I mean, getting the forecast right is what a meteorologist does. But what we do in TV is getting people to watch. I once had a friend who interviewed at, uh, with the WWF, the World Wrestling Federation, and he was going to be an announcer. And his name was Vince McMahon, and he said to the guy who was interviewing, my friend, uh, it's all about putting asses in the seats. So if you're selling a wrestling product, it's getting people to come out. What we're selling is people watching television. We can go out and get a pretty face, or, or so to speak, that uh, uh, will look aesthetically pleasing on air uh, and deliver basically you know, the weather that you can get off the internet. Or you can really find some people who have their credentials that can actually interpret that weather, whether they look good or not, uh, and put them on the air uh, to make sure that we're getting the most important and accurate information as possible. All right, well, this is where I start my day on the uh, computer. We have, uh, of course, I'm looking right here at, from the National Weather Service. We see what the temperature has been doing today. And this is what uh, one of our computer models does. And it takes the information and it plays it out. On this one, goes out to 180 hours which uh, takes us out through Thursday. Uh, this is a 500 millibar. This is about 20,000 feet up, what the pressure pattern is doing. This is down at ground level. Uh, this is humidity here, and this one over here is uh, precipitation. And uh, this is our, uh, our, what we call our future cast. It's one that shows, uh, it's like a computer model that, that shows where the clouds are going to be. And, and we use that every night because it's, it's a great tool for showing what's actually going to happen. And what this is is a loop. And so a satellite is up 23,000 miles in space and it takes these pictures about every 15 minutes and it sends them back to Earth. What happens is when the next image comes in, it puts that at the end and it kicks out the oldest image. So you have a constantly updating movie about what's going on with our weather. Even, even when the weather is, is not severe, you still need to have a meteorologist because you don't know when that's going to change. The worst thing around here is flooding, obviously. Flash flooding, you know, that's the number one killer with weather anyway. A lot of people want to get caught up on tornadoes and hurricanes because they're sexier. But flooding is the number one weather-related killer. Everyday life determ it depends on, to some extent, what the weather's going to be. And so, yeah, we don't get uh, as life-threatening a condition normally as they do in other parts of the country but it doesn't mean that the weather's any less important to us. I'm Brandon Stover. Um, I'm a broadcast meteorologist student at Mississippi State University. This is my room. I track storms here. So I started tracking hurricanes here and other weather phenomena. Uh, anytime there's a vent, uh, I, I usually put post it on this map. And here's the symbols I use when I track the storms. Now, where do I get my information? Well, this is one of the examples. This is Storm Prediction Center out of Norman, Oklahoma. They issue uh, updates on winter weather and also severe weather. I've, I've done this since I was about 12 years old. I actually drew this map when I was about 12, so my passion was overflowing from a young age. I want to make it important that meteorology is more than just uh, my love, it's also to save lives, and that's one of the most important aspects. From an economic perspective, uh, back in 1970, when, when the the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration was created, um, and, and as well as the National Weather Service. Um, we were made part of the Department of Commerce. Lots of money is involved when you're talking about evacuations for hurricanes um, and to save property too. It's, there's a lot of money wrapped up in weather. Any type of weather t uh, situation can impact the commerce system that we have in this country. How does weather, even, even if it's actually affecting, let's say, a place like Florida, how would it affect us in West Virginia? Well, those people's houses in Florida, if they're destroyed by a hurricane, insurance covers it. Who pays that insurance? Everybody in the United States. And taxes. I mean, you know, Katrina, you know, the destruction down there, you know, our, our huge government, uh, a lot of our, a lot of our uh, resources went into that. So we were paying taxes on that. We're still paying taxes on that airplanes, both military and 
commercial. And once you have in the 1920s and 1930s the rise of commercial aircraft, well, then you really want to understand the weather because you're not exposing just combatants to danger. You're exposing civilians and civilians who are paying you to be up in airplanes. There's a lot of pressure to um, understand and, and, uh, and predict the weather. Considering that weather is the biggest factor that we have and we have no control over weather where we control other variables, meteorology reports pretty much dictate how everything is going to run on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, the weather affects everything that uh, engineers do uh, in, when you're doing construction projects. We, we actually go to the National Weather Service. We're tied into a link to their, to their data system. So our goal is to minimize flood damages and so if, if we didn't have them, the flood damages could be uh, much larger than, than what they could would have been. So, uh, in fact, they've helped us minimize flood damages and, and it, it has an ultimate impact on the economy. My name is John Secor. I am the service hydrologist here at the Charleston Weather. Uh, I'm responsible for the hydro program in the office, uh, which is responsible for all the rivers and streams and forecasts on the rivers in our area. Uh, I'd like to show you a couple things that we, we do here at the office. Uh, we gather all kinds of information uh, and then we put it all together and we can display it on our graphs. This is a graph of uh, the river gauge at Tornado. As you can see, the, the, the current level is running right around just above 10 and a half feet, but this is the current forecast that we're expecting with the rain coming in this, this, uh, this weekend. So you can see we're expecting a rise on the river. It, it looks like it's a big rise, but it's actually, if you look on the scale, it's only about, gonna rise about another foot, foot, foot and a half. But we gather all the information every morning, uh, we put it all together, and then we produce a forecast, and we issue this out to the public, and we also, ha it goes to our webpage. We, we think that we live in a world where um, it's always somebody else that's uh, that's going to be, you know, in a in a bad bad weather situation. I, I think makes history more interesting when you, when you can think about the weather, because it's completely beyond human control, completely beyond human control. Nature is more powerful than anything man can ever think of. Yeah, we we we're we're an arrogant bunch of human beings. We we consider ourselves, you know, invincible. Nothing can happen to us. But it's no match when we face Mother Nature. You see how these, just out of nowhere, you know, it's a nice calm day and all of a sudden the winds start to pick up and then you'll see trees bending over double or getting snapped in half. If we could harness a lightning bolt, you know, we could run a small city for a year. I've seen pictures of gravel roads. After a tornado passes through, they're just dirt. Where are those rocks? They're just like bullets flying around. There's no way you're going to survive that. Some's even referred to giant tornadoes as fingers of God, and uh, I would tend to concur with that. We come, to, we have come to an appreciate to appreciate nature for whatever whatever it does. Um, we we understand as meteorologists that we cannot stop it, but we are here to protect. We are here to to give warning to people that Mother Nature is doing what it does, and we want to make sure that you are out of harm's way so that you are not caught in that net. So just, just being able to keep track of potential meteorological disasters at sea and over land, uh, it's a huge, it, it's, it's, it's hugely important. I, I don't know how, how you could say that it's other than hugely important to help preserve people's lives. See. Look, there's a piece. That's oh, what destroyed wait. Landon's car. <laughs> bigger, <laughs> big as a golf ball. Bigger than a golf ball. <laughs> Look at that. This baseball. is what destroyed our cars. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Look at that face. Poor Look at. <laughs>